Hey everyone, my name is Josh. Welcome back to my series on getting started with the X-Car CNC machine. As you can see behind me, the, the assembly of the machine is complete. And now it's time to calibrate the machine itself. In this video, we'll be going over the calibration and all the steps required to do that. Uh, it's not going to be a very fine, detailed calibration. It's basically just what you need to get started and ensure that you assemble the machine correctly. Um, after that, we're going to take a first carve of the machine. Um, it's just going to be a test pattern to ensure that everything is calibrated correctly and everything is set up correctly. Um, so with that, let's get started. The first step I take to calibrate the X-carve is to ensure that the Z-axis is square to the waste board. We do this by holding a square flat on the waste board and holding it up against the spindle mount and the Z-axis itself. If it's not square like you see here, the first step we take is to loosen the four screws that hold the Z-axis onto the carriage. Once I get all these loose, I hold the square back up to the spindle mount and the Z-axis to square it off. Once I ensure everything's square, I come back and tighten the screws back in place. The first few days after assembly, the belts can stretch and loosen a little bit. Due to this, they need to be retightened. I follow the same steps as I did in the assembly process, pulling the belt through to tension it by hand so that only the first few threads of the screw are showing through the hole in the end cap. And then tighten it in place so that an audible tone is heard when snapping the belt with your finger like a guitar string. I repeat this process for the other two belts on the x carve Up next, I go through the process of ensuring that all 20 adjustable V-wheels on the x carb are correctly tightened. I do this by adjusting the eccentric screw so that the V-wheel is tight, but can still be spun using pressure from your finger. After this, the initial calibration of the x carb is complete, and you can plug the USB cable into your computer. The next step in this video is to take our first carve on the machine. Since I just went through the calibration process, I decided to find a calibration test carve as my first project. I found a really well documented project with detailed measurements that I will link to in the description below. And after finding the project, I simply opened it in easel and saved it to create my own copy. Once I have the project open, the first step I take is to input the measurements of the piece of scrap wood I'm using for this carve. After this, I input the bit size and type I'm using. Finally, I position the graphic so that it carves in the correct place on my workpiece.
Next, I secure the material onto the waste area. In cutting completely through a piece, I like to place a thin piece of waste underneath the actual material so that my waste board doesn't get cut by the router. As you can see here, I should have placed the clamp to the right of the material a little bit farther towards the edge so that it wouldn't get clipped by the router. You'll see this later in the video, but I was able to fix this before any damage was actually done. I'm now ready to start the setup of the car itself. The first check is to ensure the machine is home to the correct position. Following this, Easel ensures that I correctly measured the material, secured it in place, and correctly set the right bit size and type. Next up is zeroing the machine to the material height itself. I use the Z-Probe, but this can be done manually as well. The first step here is to attach the Z-Probe by attaching the clip to the collet and plugging the lead into the carriage. I then touch the Z-probe to the bit to check connectivity, and then we can start the actual probe. Next, I set the XY0 of the spindle to the bottom left edge of the material itself. Finally, I turn the spindle on and start the car. Once the carve is complete and the spindle is turned off, I remove the material from the clamps and break the piece free from the tabs.
Here you can see me taking the necessary measurements to ensure the depth of cut is within a reasonable margin of error. All of these were within a few thousandths of an inch, which is all I will ever need from an accuracy point of view. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to accurately measure the size of the shapes as I used a 1 16th inch bit instead of the cold for a 1 8th inch bit. I calculated out the measurements after filming and they were all within the margin of error. All right, so that wraps the configuration up. Um, with those, if you follow those steps correctly, your x bar should be configured and ready to go. Um, the one tip I would actually have as far as this goes is to make sure uh, that you're using the right bit size whenever you use a third party um, project from Inventable. So I didn't actually redo that step and that's my fault. Um, it was supposed to be called for an eighth inch bit, whereas I used a 16th inch upcut bit. Uh, that caused a little bit of a difference uh, as far as the so reported sizes go, uh, the diameters, things like that. Uh, but overall, you know, when I, when I did the calculations, everything actually came out within the margin of error, uh, as well as the depths themselves were perfectly fine. Um, so um, in the next video, we're going to basically be going over the creation of your own project. Um, my personal process is to create the SVG in Adobe Illustrator and then load it into um, easel itself uh, and basically follow all the same steps to you know create that project in easel set up all the configurations things like that and then the carve itself uh, i might go over a couple finishes you know paints finishes things like that that you could do to spice up the project a little bit uh, but other than that, um, that that pretty much wraps it up here um, so if you enjoyed this video i'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribe uh, with that that'll be it thanks